Hey guys, Let's what's up? Let's combine our forces and build ourselves a huge snowman. In Time, history, memories, and disembodied voices. These, I think, were and still are the most confusing but very crucial areas of lore in Genshin. Simply because key moments in history are what makes the foundation of Genshin's lore since patch 1.0. But history, time, and alterations were never really in the spotlight up until 3.0 in Sumeru. And we were never given this much detail, especially about altering history and how it all works. Then again, Hoyo never really gives us any primo gems either. So, welcome to another video of a guy losing their sanity. It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? In this video is a refresher on how time alteration works as well as the different forms of time altering we see in Genshin, what altering history does and how it affects the game, the spooky voice at the end of 3.3 as well as whom it may be and what it could mean, how to exploit Genshin's time and memory altering mechanics, and finally a take on what all of this messing with history would mean for the story and possible future it may or may not entail. I can already see how long this video is gonna be for you guys. So brace yourselves and take it in short strides. Again, as these types of videos go, you already know what a theory is, right? With all that said, let's get started. First off, why don't we listen to a certain spooky voice from the end of 3.3 Story Quest. You sound lost and confused. I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else... <sighs> who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate like a vase that falls to the ground. Whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? Uh, who are you? How do you know about all this? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. So far, the identity of this voice isn't officially known, but let me just point you guys to the fact that both memories and what we see are the most important part of that interaction. Our memories as the traveler and as a descender are the only real eyes and ears in Teyvat. We can remember what actually happened, who disappeared from existence, and what exactly was written in whatever text we read prior. Changes in any of these areas will be remembered, and what we see should also be remembered because we are not tied to Tavat's laws. Another point to remember is the analogy that the voice mentions regarding who or what breaks the vase. This is a reminder of how time, history, and memory works in Genshin. Because in Genshin's timeline and history, it doesn't matter who breaks the vase, when it was broken, or what the person was thinking when they broke it. The only thing that matters is that as long as it was broken. Now, this all sounds weird, I know, because I put this out at the start of the video, but once we get into speed with time alterations and see how it works, you guys will soon understand. For now, keep this segment in mind because it's linked to every other segment in the video. We'll also go back to it again at the end after walking you guys through time alteration. So, bear with me. This is gonna be a real headache. Now, I know the Akasha isn't the Urban Soul and they don't do the same thing either, but the reason I want to talk about this first is that the Akasha system, and by extension, the Akasha terminal, is in a sense a time loop system, but it's not really a time loop at all. One major distinction is the Samsara's focus on dreams and not actually altering time. Even though it acts similar to a time loop, it doesn't actually alter the timeline of Teyvat in any way. It only alters the people that are inside of a populated area in Sumeru, and this is done by altering people's memories 
through repeated dreams, which is also a big part of how altering time and history works in the Ermin Soul. If you played until 3.3 and wondered how the Ermin Soul works, Ermin Soul doesn't really change history or the timeline either. Honestly, the Academia can change the way the Akasha uses dreams as energy, and they could use that energy to alter Sumeru's memories to some extent instead of trying to create a god of wisdom. Considering the amount of knowledge that the Academia possesses and the levels of both allowed and forbidden research they take, it wouldn't be outlandish for the Academia to create an urban soul like phenomena using the Akasha terminals while experimenting on the people of Sumeru. But this creates a far more terrifying thought, and that's if humans can achieve the capacity for altering memories through dreams, then what about gods altering history through memories as well? Patch 3.2 is where we finally catch a glimpse of changing history, or from what I could understand, changing memories. Ruka Devara removing her existence from Urban Soul was the first time we found out about changing history, and it was also where we first found out that we, the Traveler, is for some reason the only one who remembers Ruka Devara. Everyone else seems to have forgotten or simply doesn't have any memory of her at all. Along with some details about our sibling apparently not being a descender. But more importantly, we find out from Nahida and Skaramush that Ermansol has, and I quote, obfuscated information as well as anonymous data. Now, we're gonna get a little technical here and I'm gonna start using these terms a lot, so take this all in slowly. In coding terms, obfuscating means to replace set data with fabricated data that looks like real information. Now, there's three forms of obfuscation, data masking, encryption, and tokenization. While anonymous data is data that can no longer be associated with an individual in any sort of manner. Honestly, based on what I could understand, it could be any one of these types of obfuscation because Nahida has access as the first terminal and creator of the Akasha but is also the sole guardian of Ermansol. Now, it's possible that Celestia also has access to Ermansol and considering Nahida wasn't aware of the obfuscation, it's also possible that there's a higher level of access than Nahida as well as a third-party entity that isn't Celestia who can access the Ermansol tree. Now, obfuscating is usually done to hide sensitive information but still keep the system running without any problems. Basically replacing real information with a fake that seems real enough for a computer to read and not have any errors. Compared to redacted or expunged information which completely blacks out key information that may be important to the computer or system. So in Ermin Sol's case, this obfuscation could be done to hide sensitive information and replace it with either numbers random names, or a set of characters. Sound familiar? Again, if you played through 3.3 and have a rough idea of how Ermin Soul works, then you might draw some similarities. Bear in mind that I specifically said changing memories and not changing history itself, because even the Traveler, after finding out about their sibling, started doubting their own memories as well, thinking that it was altered or that Teyvat changed the sibling in some way. Now, something interesting about Ermin Soul is the fact that memories the Ermin Soul has are called data. Call me crazy, but I just find find it weird that memories and data are interchangeable in Teyvat's history, which technically shouldn't change because history already happened and shouldn't be changed at all. History shouldn't really be the same as computers that use the same terms like memory and data for storage because computers can easily change or even remove already written data to fit the user's preference. So if we follow a computer's system and put it into Ermansol, then it's possible that memories as data in the Ermansol could also be easily changed or removed to fit said user's preference, whoever these users are. Ermin Soul, from what we know from Nahida, is the tree that holds all knowledge, memories, as well as leyline energies of Tavat. And from what we've recently found from 3.2 and 3.3, the Ermin Soul can change history in a way that isn't really as it sounds. See, whenever someone changes the past or erases themselves from existence, the Ermin Soul simply grabs the closest thing next to that change and sticks it together with a bit of flex tape. Not literally, of course. 
compared to what we're often used to seeing where if you go back somewhere in time and move a chair by 2 inches, that timeline creates a new alternate timeline where that chair is now the main character of Genshin. Compared to how Tavat works, if you move the chair by 2 inches, Urban Soul makes it so that the chair still moves 2 inches. But either nobody knows who moved it or uses an empty placeholder or in Nahida's case, an obfuscation to replace you and keep the timeline running. This outcome is the same for the more important parts of the game's story as well. Hence why we still have the knocked over vase, but the one knocking it over wasn't Paimon, empty placeholder. As well as completely replacing memories about Ruka Devara with Kusanali in 3.2. Obfuscation. We also have Scaramouche's little ultimatum in 3.3 where Scaramouche was replaced by a vengeful swordsmith. The books and studies we read mentions Niwa and the swordsman jumping into the furnace instead of Scaramouche with Niwa's heart, leading to the vengeful son of the swordsmith replacing Scaramouche. But that swordsmith was instead beaten by the Kamisato and Kaidehara clan, which still kind of works with the timeline but no one knows the swordsmith's identity. Obfuscation. The Torei still mess with everything in Inazuma and by extension Sumeru, which still works considering the Torei's plan was to sabotage Tatarasuna and not Scaramouche empty placeholder, as well as his plan to get cozy with Sumeru after being godless for 500 years and not make Scaramouche into a god. Since the god robot we fought which supposedly had Scaramouche was written as a hollow robot with no one inside it. Another empty placeholder. All of this goes back to the mysterious voice saying that it can be anything or anyone to break a vase just as long as it's broken. Now applying that same principle to Scaramouche and everything that happened, it doesn't matter if Scaramouche was in Tatarasuna or Sumeru at all. Tatarasuna was supposed to be sabotaged by the Torei because it was the Fatui's or at least the Torei's plan all along. And the Academia always wanted to create a God of Wisdom anyway, regardless of their robot having a pilot or not. Empty placeholder. Now, we've taken into account that books and any written text can be obfuscated by Ermensel, especially if those books had the actual names of said people that were removed from Ermensel's records, as well as every interaction with said person being replaced with either an empty placeholder or obfuscated data. One big example of wiping all related memory and an empty placeholder is Paimon not remembering breaking the vase because it was part of our discussion about Scaramouche. The way Ermensel works even debunks Paimon's statement about how history is written. Because not only did Paimon assume that she was drinking from the vase happened, she even broke it while talking about Scaramouche, which she knows happened because of her uneasiness for Scaramouche's sudden disappearance. So by that logic, every memory and associated memory can be removed from anyone related to the person or topic in question, which puts a big emphasis on who exactly can remember what from which time, as well as making Genshin's real history even more messed up due to people losing segments of real information. If Paimon can't remember the vase breaking, then she can't remember why she broke the vase and what thought she had when she did, which was all about Scaramouche empty placeholder. But if we use this same principle to a bigger scale, this would then apply to events and people that if removed could obfuscate large segments of history completely. So everything seems to work well, right? You take a person out of Ermensel's records and everyone's memory and whatever else is written about them literally rewrites itself to make everything relatively work the same. Simple, right? Something bad about these historical alterations from Urban Soul's technicality is that we don't know what really happened in the past, unless someone who was actually there and wasn't affected by obfuscation tells us the real story, like how we told the scholars of Sumeru about what actually happened in Tatarasuna. And the same goes with Nahida and the god robot. But this revelation where we find real information about history is about one in a million, considering we only have four descenders since the countless years of Teyvat's lifetime that already passed. And the only people we know that could remember alterations in Teyvat are people who aren't from Teyvat. 
without a proper string and record of actual events and the unknown scale of obfuscation that may have already happened, as well as more changes in the future being made on the simple whim of an entity that not even the god of wisdom herself knows, it makes everything that happened since the creation of Tavat or at least the creation of Urmansol be either massively altered or we'd have segments of history that are heavily obfuscated just to fill the holes created from erasing the existence of possibly more than one person, especially if it's the existence of a very important and relevant person at that time, such as Ruka Devara and Skaramush. Now, think about this change in history being the existence of a group of gods like, say, the Primordial One and the Shades. Easteroth, then everything would just be removed from memory while whatever already happened would be stuck together to fit what they did. Everyone in Tevat wouldn't know who the Primordial One is as well as who the Shades are, which I think is already happening. If it was a small town or city, then maybe history or more accurately, Tavat's memories would be altered to make it seem like no one knows of the village's existence or be dubbed as a ruined city. Now, imagine if we used an entire civilization, one that nobody knew existed apart from those same people who left that civilization to go to the surface after who knows how long. Then, nobody on the surface would know who or where these underworld dwellers came from. What if that civilization wasn't supposed to exist but was given a chance to exist anyway? Then, maybe that chance to go back to the surface would require a certain deal or sacrifice that only they would know and all that would never be revealed to the surface. Maybe those people would also need to hide certain information about that civilization and keep it away from the eyes and ears of the surface world, just for them to be allowed to stay on the surface. Really cool, right? Now, what if an entire continent or race that lived before the Archon War existed? A race that once possessed beautiful forms and great wisdom, as well as a god that kept them safe from harm and watched over them. Maybe at the time, thousands of years ago, this wisdom wasn't supposed to be passed down to the younger generations. Then maybe all the information and stories of that race and everything they did, as well as related information about them that were told to us by our ancestors and recorded in books, would then be wiped from memory and rewritten to fit their utter disappearance. And what happens next is that we are left with a small inkling of a bygone people as well as small bits of information now only named as moons, spirits, fairies, and sailies. This race might have had wisdom great enough to be called a sin in the eyes of the gods and would need to be covered up with maybe a veil. And their god would then be cast down from the heavens while their people would be left to lose their minds and memory. If that were to happen somehow, then maybe these changes in history are also done to hide these so-called sins and only precious few know about what actually happened those thousands of years ago, as well as being left with the far cry that these people and their god once had are now preserved in the artifact pieces that we now carry. The information we got from the many artifact sets as well as the newest ones from both Desert Pavilion and Flower of Paradise is lost information that very few can stumble upon and let alone interpret. Even the names of the pieces symbolize the important few moments in time that they shared before becoming the memories imprinted on the artifact pieces. This massive change in alteration to Tevat's history is, I dare say, something that very few can find out about and even fewer can piece together and make sense of. And it wouldn't be a surprise if Hoyo gave us more snippets of old world information, but this time might have been altered to fit Celestia's selfish narrative. Especially because artifacts are, for me, the only reliable information we have so far regarding to Vat's real history. So now we go back to the mysterious voice and what it could mean for the rest of the story moving forward. Let's go over our interactions with this weird voice again, but this time include the traveler's thoughts. You sound lost and confused. 
I know why you are troubled. Any who knew of this would find their mind overwhelmed. Huh? Is there someone here talking to us? Unfortunately, the fate of Tevat cannot easily be changed. Perhaps a god may have a slim chance, but for anyone else, <sighs> who can say? When a small animal runs into a tree trunk, though the tree may sway, it is not displaced. The same is true of fate. Like a vase that falls to the ground, whether it is broken by a cat or by a bird, the result is still a broken vase, is it not? Uh, who are you? How do you know about all this? History does not change easily, but human hearts can. Believe your own eyes. Only that which you see is true. What is unseen is but an illusion. So, did you find any key information that you should keep in your journey moving forward? Well, trust your eyes and believe your memories because what has been unseen is not real. History cannot be easily changed, but humans can. All that I've mentioned since the beginning of this video just loops back again to the same principle. Everything that changes in Tevat is now an illusion and isn't the real history we actually know and experience. The only thing that you can trust is honestly your own memories and you can't even trust the memories of an Archon because everything in Tavat is either not real, empty placeholder, or has been altered by the Erminsol, obfuscation. The voices inside about history, memories, and time points to one possible entity, and that entity has been hiding its name since before the sun and moon. Remember, the Traveler doesn't know the name Easteroth. If the Traveler knows anything from Enkanomiya, it would be that Enkanomiya worshipped the Tokoyo Okami or Toratsi. But not what or who Istaroth really is as a god of time that we all speculate. The Traveler honestly might not even be able to read before the sun and moon at all, since we can't really read Enkonomian text and the end of the Byako Yahoku collection quest opens up an alternate or some type of time pocket world that was never really explained, along with the Traveler never really talking about the Tokoyo Okami or Toratsi in our journey through Tabat. But then again, the weird voice being Easteroth isn't official yet. So for now, we can just assume that the voice which interacted with the Traveler and Paimon knows quite a lot about time and history, as well as how it all works with people's memories in Tavat. The mysterious voice also mentions that maybe a god could have a slim chance at changing fate and history, but for anyone else, it's hard to say. There's a difference between what Scaramouche did to remove himself from existence and what Makoto did to preserve herself for A to find her. Whether or not Scaramouche doesn't have the ability or capacity to do what Makoto did, we can't say. But Scaramouche's goal was at least different enough from Makoto's. Scaramouche simply wanted the entirety of Tavat's history to rewrite itself without his existence, which ended up the same way Ruka Devara did with Kusanali in 3.2. So, how can you answer? answer Scaramouche's question, can you change the past? Makoto's goal was to preserve a shred of her consciousness and her remaining will into a pocket and time. She uses both eternity and time to create infinity to keep her will from being swallowed in the vastness of time itself and using dreams to illuminate, in other words, make visible her thoughts and memories, allowed her to make that formless will and memory from a moment in time before her death to take shape. This came in the form of a seed which, if planted, will take root and become the Sakura tree. And this Sakura tree had every bit of information that Makoto needed to impart into A before she died. The same tree which A had been pondering to herself never existed at all until she met Makoto once again. This strategy to preserve one's will through dreams, time, and memory is one way a god could be able to change history without obfuscation from 
from Ermenso. Makoto even mentions that what she did isn't affected by the heavenly principles. So we can also assume that Ermenso's data alteration system is part of the heavenly principles' laws. The pocket dimension in Enkonomiya also draws some sort of similarity to how Makoto created a pocket dimension in time to hold information. This I think is what gods like Easteroth and Archons like Makoto could do to bypass Ermensol and the Heavenly Principles' radar. And maybe even Zhong Li and Shura's Hack Venti would know about how all this works as well. But was never really given a proper spotlight just yet. But a puppet like Scaramouche? Well, what he did was only another example in the mysterious voices analogies about history and time. Like a small animal running into a tree trunk, Scaramouche merely swayed the trunk of said tree, but not displacing it. Maybe Ruka Devara also used the same strategy that Makoto had, since they technically know each other and know how Ermensal and erosion works. But then again, Ruka Devara still needed to remove her existence anyway because of forbidden knowledge. Now, all all of this is something only gods can do but with a very slim chance and something that mere humans can only hope to try and achieve. Remember what I said about books being changed to fit a certain narrative? Yeah, well what if you could bypass that mechanic in Ermensol by changing the names and fixing the narrative to completely avoid Ermensol's heavenly principle? Nahida mentions that you can bypass Ermensol's rewriting phenomena by creating something called an allegorical book. This type of book in simple terms is by creating a children's book or fairy tale. Scaramouche's cat's tail story is one example, and that might not even be the only allegorical story that might have bypassed Ermensol's technicalities. See, we've had multiple children's stories in Genshin that could be counted as allegorical books. The Byaku Yakuku wouldn't count as an allegorical set of books, but then again, we got those books from a weird time pocket that was also located in Enkanomiya of all places. The reverse names of Istaroth, Kairos, as well as Tokoyo Okami and finally the parables from Before the Sun and Moon and riddles from In Light Beneath the Shadow that were included in the collection could pass as allegorical books however. We also have the Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies which were thought of as Saritza and the Six Archons as well as the Night Mother which was the source of all sins. Finally we have Vera's Melancholy which was speculated to be an allegorical book about either the Primordial One and the Four Shades or at least Easteroth and the three other shades. Now, I won't go into detail here as well as mentioning other allegorical stories because honestly, allegorical books and how they could be interpreted deserves a video in its own right. With all that said, it is possible that Isaroth created this exploit in the Ermensel to leave small bits of information in Tevat for people to find out and hopefully realize some sort of secret that Celestia doesn't want Tevat to know about. Maybe this allegorical storytelling and dream time pocket dimensions is a failsafe created by Isaroth in case something goes wrong with the Ermensel or if the gods in Celestia suddenly do something stupid. Then again, we don't know if the Primordial One and the Shades themselves created Ermensol either, or Celestia for that matter. Maybe Easteroth purposefully gives this information to us because we are descenders and have some capacity to beat the gods of Celestia, or all of this is just a huge bait and Easteroth was pulling a Wizard of Oz clip. Honestly, no one can say just yet because we don't even know who the voice really is and can only rely on our own speculations. It's also possible that Celestia can change everything in Tevat again but on a more drastic scale to keep us from finding out what really happened 500 years ago as well as thousands of years ago too. With how Hoyo decided to make their timeline, literally anything can change as we move closer to the final region and uncover the possible truth that the Abyss holds. And with every step closer, we can expect more changes in Tevat's history and the people's memories as well. So you guys better hold on to whatever lore you still have and know of because, oh boy, I can see Hoyo destroying as much lore as they can and build up all that broken lore into one big reveal of the real story once we reach the end. 
So there you go, how I think Genshin's time altering and memory altering works based on what we know since possibly 2.1. I hope you guys did enjoy this video because I sure as hell did. It's also been a while and I've been wanting to put this video out but each patch just keeps giving more and more juicy lore for us. So tell me in the comments is my little theory okay or is it just another raving of a mad scholar from the academia. If you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe as well as hit the bell icon to stay up to date with all the videos and streams I make on this channel. Also do let me know what you guys think about 3.0 all the way to 3.3 because I sure as heck am losing my mind putting bits of lore together along with the lore that we already have. I do know one thing however, it's something that we should all think about after hearing the mysterious voice and it's that we can't trust anyone, not even the gods or Paimon for that matter. Honestly, it's probably safer to trust the Fatui since they might already know about other exploits in the Ermin Soul, especially from the Tori and Piero. Colombina, however, will hopefully find out more about later on. But that's it for this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and with that, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe more my ramblings, and stay man theorists. Bye!